it was all over the news last night, and it's all over today's newspaper that uh, Attorney General Keith Ellison has awakened himself uh, to <laughs> investigate Merwin's Liquor and Winter Gas Station over on Lindale and Broadway uh, because too much crime happens in that vicinity. No. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, this should anger every single taxpayer of the state especially, of Minnesota. Especially the Reverend Tim. Yep. The investigation aims to see whether the businesses are taking any steps to address the repeated violent crime occurring outside their buildings oh, or no. if they're turning a blind eye. Oh, Within God. the last week or so, eight people were shot in the area, which was left riddled with bullets. Let me oh, stop right there. Oh, my God. Uh, these, the, the Mysterians, these extraordinary leftists like Ellison, uh, they're incapable of holding the individual responsible. Yep. And and he doesn't know how to wrestle with or even perhaps acknowledge the decline of moral and ethical integrity. But it's not the it's not the responsibility of a liquor store owner or the owner of a gas station to to uh, monitor the behavior of young hoodlums. <clears throat> and but that's what's attempting to be done here. We're attempting to blame the liquor store and blame the gas station because these people are incapable of putting the blame where it should be on the upbringing of these thugs, period. There's mm -hmm. no other answer for it. Plus, where are the violence interrupters? Well, that's what I was going to get to right. because there is a statement from Merwin Liquors on that very thing. Well, could you, would you uh, give it to me, please? Because I have an idea for the violence interrupters. This is from Karen Scullin of Fox 9. I saw it this morning as well. Quote, Merwin Liquors, Minneapolis, is excited to announce our new partnership with We Push for Peace, a Minneapolis-based nonprofit organization. We Push for Peace will assume all staffing, security, and community engagement responsibilities at the store located at 700 West Broadway. Okay, but I don't know if Push for Peace is the same as the violence interrupters. I think they might be affiliated because you, you'll recall the gentleman that was involved with We Push for Peace knocked a guy out in front of a Target store. You remember that story we we discussed? Right, that and I continue yeah. to tell you that I'm, I think, you know, we have so many of these organizations. True, yep. That I think violence interrupters, remember they got the seven and a half mil. I don't know if Push for Peace got any dough at all. I can look at look that But here's, here's what I would suggest. Why not? Uh, you you've paid them uh, amounts of money that we have no abil ability to track or discover if it's accomplished anything. Right. Why don't you demand that the violence interrupters patrol that area? It it's not Merwin's sense. problem. That would make sense. It's not Winner's problem. It's not Merwin's problem. You've already got money on the table for your so-called violence interrupters. Mm -hmm. Where are they? Why don't you use them? Yeah, what are they doing? But Ellison's not capable of. Uh, understanding the true nature we push for problem. peace is a nonprofit organization that was started by Trey and pollard to be a resource and advocate to those in the inner city on a broader scale our mission is in the name of the organization and our services range from assisting communities in need local businesses or youth or local municipalities fine that's different from the violence interrupters right just wanted to clarify uh, i would uh, caution us on this topic what do you mean? Um, well, I went to uh, you, uh, because the Reverend Tim has brought up these two places frequently, yeah, a lot. So I went to his Twitter account and he responded to Jim Schultz for Attorney General, who mm -hmm. tweeted 19 hours ago, "Unclear what world Keith Ellison is living in." Now, small business owners are the ones at fault for the violent crime resulting from his failed policies. I have a simple proposal: maybe Ellison should just do his job. Okay, that was Jim Schultz 19 right. hours ago. Uh, the Reverend Tim responded, and these are Tim's words, and I'm going to read them word for word. Mm -hmm. Slow it down, Jim. If, th if this is a bit over your head, I can break it down for you. When drugs are being sold out of your store, yes, Jim, that owner is responsible. Oh. Well, then the Reverend Tim apparently is comfortable claiming that drugs are being sold out. Uh, is he implying that they're sold inside the story? I'm not going to try to, I'm just going to let his words get him on the line, his, Chris, speak for himself, Call Reverend Tim, but I know that he has had an issue with these two places for years. And if the drugs are being sold inside the store, Tim has a point. Okay. If they're being sold on the corner in front of the store, 
Tim has no point. It's not the owner's fault. It would be the owner's fault if on aisle three, they're selling fentanyl to each other. Mm. Well, I doubt this is an item that's stocked. You're, no, I know, but if he's allowing people to go right, in the no, store. You're right. You're right. Yep. Uh, I'm using the power of my office to take new approaches to stemming the epidemic of gun violence. This is Allison. We have, uh, like we have done to keep tenants safe from problem property owners, uh, we are applying the laws in ways it's not commonly been applied before uh, to solve persistent problems and keep people safe. Ellison said, companies or properties that turn a blind eye to gun violence and other threats to public safety happening on their premises need to know we are watching and will act. I, st I, I still take issue with them. Companies and properties that turn a blind eye. Well, apparently they haven't turned a blind eye because they are repeatedly and routinely calling the police. Why do you think there's so many response calls there? One of the right. last times that the Reverend was with us, and Kenny, you might remember better than me, he did call for the closure of what, was that the station he had called for the closure of that you recall? I know he's had a, an issue with Merwin's. Okay. Because I did it now that went, once Kenny read that from the Reverend, I do remember him saying that once on the show. But I don't know if he's, it's, if it's the and same station he's referring un, to. Until we get him on the air, we've got to be careful with the whole slander thing here. So Correct. Let's, let's, what are we slandering? We're not yet. We're well, good. Who, We're who's even in the target zone? The two uh, those two businesses. And right, I'm defending the two businesses. Right. Okay. Cool. Cool. They. What business is it of theirs? And if you if you closed Merwin's liquor store, I believe they're a chain, aren't they? There's other Merwin's liquors around. I think so. I, I believe know. they're a chain. But if you close Merwin's liquor, you don't think the bad guys will just hang out some other place that has lighting? Well, well, who's kidding who here? 